Can you all hear me? All right. I'm also from Karnataka. The name kind of gives out. And there are a lot of people talk about detection, response, recovery, and resilience. And what I want to talk to you today is about prevention, prevention of cyber attacks. When you talk about resiliency, it kind of makes an inherent assumption that attacks are imminent. It's good to have that assumption made, but not without paying attention to prevention as a key or the foundational goal. Today, I want to present you seven key principles of preventing cyber attacks. How do we go about establishing a security posture that makes the life of attacker harder, right? Today, attackers have an easy go. Whenever they want to launch an attack, all that they have to do is run some scan, identify a few weaknesses, go after any organization, irrespective of the size, vertical, nothing matters. They just have an easy go. And they are mostly successful, and that is why we end up seeing so many attacks that are occurring today Every now and then we hear about them. But what are we doing wrong? There must be something that, that is uh, making the attackers have an upper hand, and it's important that we have an upper hand who is tasked with defending our infrastructure, defending our interest. So what do we do? So here I present some of the foundational principles of security cybersecurity in particular, that we can adopt and we can fortify our defense to ensure that the attacks do not occur in an ideal scenario. It's good to be prepared to think that attacks are imminent and be prepared, but you don't want to have that as a natural go, right? You don't want to do that. So cybersecurity, the key requirement for cybersecurity is having visibility. You really know, need to know at the detail level what is that something that you're safeguarding. Most of the organizations today don't have this clarity in what they are safeguarding. That is the foundational requirement. I don't need to tell you, you know visibility is the key requirement, and that visibility needs to be a continuous visibility. You need to know what are the devices, who are the users, where are they accessing from, what application load that you have, what cloud infrastructure that you have hosted, what has come up, what has gone down. Everything is important. Number two is when you have the visibility, you still don't have that control because you've not really comprehended what is in my infrastructure. Because there are a lot of questions that might be, must be asked. Is this device supposed to be connecting from wherever it is connecting from? Are these software applications that are installed in this infrastructure, are they supposed to be installed? Is it supposed to be configured this way? When you start asking these questions, you will start strengthening your infrastructure and make it really known good. That is the second principle of cybersecurity, visibility, and then having the control that control comes from comprehensive understanding of your IT infrastructure. Number three, this is one of my favorite. Number three is every attack. Every attack exploits some weakness that is present in the infrastructure. A weakness could be process weakness, technology weakness, or people sort of weaknesses, right? So you talk about any attack that has taken place in the recent past, you will invariably be able to connect back to a possible weakness if you had identified that weakness prior to the exploitation, you would have saved good amount of effort and dollars and money with it. And if you start looking at your infrastructure, which is typically comprised of devices, applications, users, data, and network infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, et cetera, from the weakness angle, if you really study the infrastructure from the weakness angle prior to the exploitation of those weaknesses, a lot can be done to strengthen the infrastructure posture. So what is that weakness that I'm talking about? Weakness is nothing but vulnerability that we are 
overly using this terminology in day in and day out. Vulnerabilities that are there in your software applications, vulnerabilities that are there in your computing infrastructure, the data distribution layer, everywhere vulnerabilities are there. Identity related vulnerabilities could be there. Maybe you have deployed certain security controls which is not functioning, vulnerability could be there. So it's important to understand those vulnerabilities and those exposures that could potentially be exploited in the form of an attack. Number four, threat is not object agnostic. What do I mean by here? There are millions of devices out there, so attackers can choose any device, but they'll go after a particular device that gives them ROI that everybody is interested in particular device that is having critical infrastructure components running, particular device that has sensitive data, particular device that has maybe source code that I can encrypt it and ask for ransom, right? So it is important to associate some sort of a priority tag to each of the devices that you have in the infrastructure. The fifth principle, this is where most organizations err is we take pride in identifying the problems but not take pride in actually closing that loop which is fixing the problem. If you ask any organizations, they are sitting with millions of vulnerabilities today, unable to go ahead and fix them. That is the fundamental problem that we are seeing. If you have million vulnerability, what obviously attackers have the same visibility, they will go after and exploit those vulnerabilities until you act upon those. If you had the opportunity to act upon those, attackers' life would obviously become harder. This is sixth complexity is the enemy of security known to all of us. Complexity can come in the form of organizational hierarchy, complexity can come in the form of processes, anything that kind of hindrance, acts as an hindrance to our action, which is to strengthen the posture of our organizations. Typically, most organizations have a siloed sort of an approach to team and the hierarchy that they set up. If I have to identify vulnerability, security team, the team takes responsibility for it. If there is a remediation that needs to be acted upon, IT team takes the responsibility. And each of them are operating sort of in a silo and there is no connectivity or a single ownership. So that is where found another fundamental problem that most organizations are dealing with today. And the seventh one, heed to automation. Whenever I talk about uh, automation, especially when you are dealing with critical workload that is something that you're trying to safeguard, people always have that fear. Yes, it is needed to have those manual controls. It is necessary to have those um, interventions as necessary, but a lot can be automated with tools, with platform, with integration, with all of them coming together. Can we offload? some part of our work to the machines and the tools to do it themselves as against stuck with manual interventions for every situation that we are dealing with. So just as a recall, get continuous visibility to your environment. You are in control only when you are able to comprehend, which means standardize your infrastructure. Believe that every attacker is exploiting a weakness, so go out identifying the weakness on a continuous basis and mitigate those weaknesses. Threat is not object agnostic, which means prioritize your critical assets, label them, mark them, and appropriately implement the actions that are necessary. Sixth, fifth one is knowing a problem is only off good, doesn't serve the purpose. It, unless you go and cross the full mile, you're not going to reap the benefit. You just get to discover the vulnerability, but you're not actually acting upon that vulnerability is no good. And simplify as much as possible everything that is out there in your infrastructure. Maybe a heterogeneous environment that you have, can I n harmonize it and bring it into a sameness, for example? If there are certain processes that are acting as a hindrance, can I go ahead and 
cut down those manual inter processes that are required. And the, the last one, seventh one, is making it autonomous, extremely critical. Can the systems act themselves? I know there is always the trust factor, but we can take the journey towards that. When I go to buy a car, I get a car which is ready to move from one place to another place. Computing ideally should get into that stage. That is the distant dream. At some point in time, we should be able to buy a car similar to the way we are buying any other. I mean, buy a cybersecurity tool similar to the way we are buying cars. That is the at least the desired destination as far as cybersecurity is concerned. So with this, at SecPod, we have come up with a framework called Continuous Vulnerability and Exposure Management. All of these principles applied into one single unified concept where you get visibility to the environment, normalize the infrastructure to make it known good, detect vulnerabilities of all kind, not just the software vulnerability, across all the layers, prioritize those, as I said, tag them based on severity, and then take them through the remediation cycle as well. Don't start at, stop at detecting and prioritizing. Equally important is to remediate and then report your compliance posture against that particular state. And this is the way you can gain an upper hand over the attackers in the prevention side of it. And this is the tool set that we have that unifies all of them into single console. Obviously, we have a, a booth out there from tomorrow onwards. Welcome to see it. Thank you, everyone. I don't really like the buzzer. I completed in time. <laughs>